But chances are, even if your closet is stuffed full of clothes right now, you're doing the challenge already. You're probably wearing a yeah. very small selection of clothes. Yeah. But what's so interesting, I guess, is that all of that other stuff, you have an emotional reaction to that stuff every single day. Even if you don't really clock that as what's happening, it can impact your mood. Mm -hmm. I mean, I used to be kind of bummed out that I had spent so much money on certain things, that I still had things with tags on, even though yeah. I was so excited to purchase it. The clothes that don't fit, yeah. like all of that really can weigh on you. And so when it's gone, there is really this sense of clarity that you don't have prior. Yeah. Welcome to the Minimal Mom Podcast. Dawn reaches a million women each month with practical tips to simplify your home. If you're looking for more help, she has over 700 videos on YouTube to help you declutter quickly. The best thing that I have learned from Dawn is if it's not a definite yes, it's a no. And I am a shopper and I use that all the time in the fitting room. And I look and I say, oh, this is okay. And I say, no, it's not a definite yes, it's a no. So you've saved me bundles of money. I, I love all your stuff. Thanks for everything that you do. Today, Dawn is joined by Courtney Carver from Be More With Less and the creator of Project 333, the minimalist fashion challenge featured in Real Simple, Vogue and O. This three-month challenge has been changing closets and lives around the world since 2010. And Courtney, I think you're, I don't know, maybe most well-known for Project 333, where you help us highly simplify our wardrobe. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself and Project 333? Well, I started Project 333 in 2010, so forever ago, it feels like now. And I started it shortly after I started my blog, Be More With Less, to talk about what to do with my closet because it was so out of control. And I always had this kind of slow and gentle approach to simplicity. I didn't want to do anything too fast. I didn't want anything to be too stressful. But when it came to my closet, I just couldn't make progress because I thought that shopping for new clothes was relieving stress. And so I was all into relieving stress and my closet just kept growing and there just didn't seem to be a real gentle approach. And I decided to create a challenge for myself so I could sample simplicity in the closet without fully committing. Yeah. And I think many of us can relate to that idea of having tons of clothing and nothing to wear. And I think that's the biggest frustration is feeling like I have all of this clothing inventory. Why is it still so stressful to get dressed at the beginning of the day? And so what did you find the first time you experimented this with this? What did you find? Well, what was so interesting is that I decided to look at all my clothes at once, which normally I would have, you know, most of my clothes in the closet, but I had a lot of clothes and boxes and other areas of the home. And so I got everything together and I put it all on my bed just so I could really feel that kind of shock of, okay. oh my gosh, look what you spent your money on and look what you never at what you never wear or aren't interested in or didn't even remember that you had. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be a little offended by my prior shopping habits. And then from there, I used the challenge to narrow down my items to 33 for three months. And then I just hid everything else. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't making really complicated decisions about what should I donate? What should I sell? What should I yeah. give away? I just didn't want to think about it until I knew what this was all about. And so for mm -hmm. three months, all I had were 33 items and that included clothing, jewelry, accessories, and shoes. So clothing items were probably about 20 to 23 in my closet mm -hmm. and including outerwear. And the first day I thought, oh, <laughs> this is not going to be enough. Yeah. People are going to, people are going to notice right. because I was working full time at, at okay. that time. And I, I just had a lot of nervousness around it, but I also had this sense of, wow, this is going to be kind of nice. Yeah. Like I'm not going to have to make all these decisions. Yeah. These are the only clothes I have to choose from. They're all clothes I enjoy for the most part. Even in the beginning, it wasn't like, oh, I love every single piece. Yeah. Um, 
And then I expected to go for three months and then get on with it. But today, many, many, many years later, yeah. I still dress with 33 items or less every three months. Yeah. That's awesome. So let's let's go through some of the questions that then come up with this. So <laughs> you said it includes shoes, clothing, accessories. So like it's winter here in Minnesota. Does that include my winter coat? Am I winter? So coat? yes, and it's okay. winter where I am too. So winter coat, scarf, hat, okay. gloves, I include. Okay. I wouldn't include if if it was something that was just for like skiing or okay. hiking. Mm -hmm. If it was totally just workout related, then I wouldn't count it. Okay. And you don't include workout clothes or undergarments or pajamas, correct? Correct. However, workout clothes have to be working out. So we're in this age right now where there's a fine line between workout clothes and real life clothes. Yep. Leisure wear, it's all very confusing. <laughs> and more than ever, I just want to be comfortable every yes. single day. And so if I'm including a pair of leggings or sweatpants, that I'm going to work out in and live in, I'm going to count it. Okay. But if it's only for workout, then I won't count it. Okay. And what if I am someone who's like kind of like into fashion? Did people at your job really not notice that you were wearing the same pieces over and over again for three months? Okay. So two questions there. Let's do the fashion one second. But okay. people at my work really did not notice for at least for those three months, I don't even think for the first year. And what was so interesting about that is I worked in publishing. And so I worked for magazines and there was a time where the Associated Press did a story about Project 333 and they actually sent it to our company and they didn't even, if they didn't put the, the dots together. <laughs> So that was great. And, yeah. and what was so freeing about that mm -hmm. is I always thought people were noticing more about me than they were. Yeah. And so to realize that people don't really care what I'm wearing, maybe they don't mm -hmm. care about a lot of things that I'm doing. So yeah. perhaps I don't have to factor that into the equation of me making lifestyle changes. Yeah. And so do you feel like then either for yourself or if you've seen other women put these wardrobes together, can you have pieces that have personality in it or do we have to keep it kind of vanilla so everything mixes and matches? So that, and that kind of goes with that last question about what if you're into fashion. So I have seen this challenge done in thousands of different ways. Mm -hmm. And some people enjoy like a really neutral wardrobe. Mm -hmm. Some people enjoy lots of colors and prints. Some people have used it as an opportunity to be really creative about what they're mixing and matching. Mm -hmm. And then other people like me just want everything to go with everything. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't have to think about it. And it works in all cases. It doesn't take away that fashion sense if that's something that's interesting yeah. to you. Yeah. But it can give you pause to say, how am I approaching this love of mine in fashion? Is it by constantly adding to my closet and then never using most of the stuff? Or am I yeah. really learning how to repurpose things and enjoy it and yeah. add color in a way that works for me? Yeah. And I think often we think of, uh, many of us would hold like Europeans in high esteem as like, as those who are very fashionable or more fashion forward and interested. And what I've learned from them is that they don't have huge wardrobes. They're very intentional about curating high quality pieces that fit well and that look good on them. Like they're very, like the piece has to look good on me, right? And feel good on me. Not just because, oh, I saw this on Target and it's the new trend. So I'm just going to get it. Like they're very intentional about how they curate their wardrobes. Yeah, I would agree with that. And I, I mean, I actually have a lot of people in uh, Europe that participate in okay. Project 333 and they can stuff a lot of clothes into those small closets. I think a lot of them will tell you, but there is this, at least it's a, something you see on Pinterest, like the, the French yeah. women's capsule mm -hmm. wardrobe and the pieces mm -hmm. you must have. Yeah. I, I think that that is for some people, but that is also kind of like a, a bit of a marketing thing as sure. well. Sure. So it's, it's interesting to see, but I mean, for people living in a bigger city, Paris, or even in the U.S., in New York, you're going to see, if you're walking around New York City, most people are wearing all black and comfortable shoes. Yeah, yeah. At least 
from my vantage point. Right. So I think it's interesting that when we travel and we think about like, what are we going to need mm -hmm. in this place that we're yeah. going? Like we fantasize about all these clothes and amazing yeah. things that we need. And then when we get there, we're like, all right, what is the most comfortable thing right. I can wear today? <laughs> That's awesome. And so is this considered, if you if you go through the exercise and you create your wardrobe of 33 pieces, is this considered a capsule wardrobe or is that something different? Yeah, I think it falls under that umbrella for sure mm -hmm. uh, because it's a small selection of clothing that you've decided to work with for a certain period of time. Mm -hmm. And you may change that out seasonally or some of it, but yeah, it's a, it is a capsule wardrobe. And so has there ever been a time now over the last 12 years since you've been doing this that you felt like you didn't have enough variety or you weren't appropriately addressed for an occasion that you had? No, the only thing that happened uh, that I thought was kind of a, a fun thing, but I didn't think that in that moment, is I was in New York with my daughter and we were waiting for a train and we had just gotten coffees and I was holding on to my coffee and I was wearing a a lightly blue and white striped shirt and I took a, a big sip of my coffee and the lid wasn't on and so there was more coffee like down my shirt than in my mouth which is sad on so many levels <laughs> but in I had to decide am I gonna wear a stained shirt all day in the name of simplicity or am I gonna go and get a different shirt and I went and got a different shirt so I always say that this is not a project in suffering. Yes. That's not what it's about. <laughs> it's about yeah. learning about what you really want and need in your closet. And for some people, that's going to be 39 items or 52 mm -hmm. items or 22 items. So there's not a lot of magic to 33, but it's a great place to start. Yeah. I think that's good because I think a lot of us are just looking for some kind of guideline when it comes to our clothing. And so, like you said, I think it's such a, a great starting point. And I mean, so let's say, okay, I am listening to you today. I'm like, I want to try this out. How do I start? Do I like make my bed and start laying out these pieces on there? Like how practically would I start this today? So the way that I start is by just making a list yeah. of the clothes I think I would want to include for the three months. So depending on what time of year it was, what events I knew I had coming up, I would make a list. And the list is probably going to end up being longer than 33 items. And I wouldn't do it in front of your closet. So okay. I would tr do it separately so that you're not like, oh yeah, that and that mm -hmm. and that. Instead, remove yourself from that situation and just jot down like what what pants am I normally wearing? What skirts, what dresses, what shirts, what coats? And then you can narrow it down from there. Mm -hmm. But chances are, even if your closet is stuffed full of clothes right now, you're doing the challenge already. You're probably wearing a yeah. very small selection of clothes. Yeah. But what's so weird or interesting, I guess, is that all of that other stuff, you have an emotional reaction to that stuff every single day. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't really clock that as what's happening, it can impact your mood. Mm -hmm. I mean, I used to be kind of bummed out that I had spent so much money on certain things, that I still had things with tags on, even though yeah. I was so excited to purchase it. Um, and that all, the clothes that don't fit, yeah. like all of that really can weigh on you. And so when it's gone, there is really this sense of clarity that you don't have prior. Yeah. Totally. I couldn't believe it. once I really simplified my wardrobe and my whole thing was like, I am only going to have things in my closet that are an option for today that fit right now and that I feel good in. And it was a very small amount of clothing when I, when that was my criteria for simplifying. But I couldn't believe how, once I cleared that extra stuff out, how much better I felt about myself. I did not realize how much that stuff was mocking me. I mean, like, you used to be able to fit into this. Now you don't. Like you said, you spent money on it. I couldn't believe that. And how I feel so much more positively about myself and my clothing now that that stuff is gone and everything fits. It is, I mean, it is such a gift that we give to ourselves and it does, it's, it's totally irrelevant what size you are right now. It's saying that right now I'm going to have 33 pieces that I feel good in. Yeah. I mean, I think there's this, this inner monologue for some of us that goes something like, I have to 
fit into all of my clothes. Like it's my job to fit into my clothes. And so if something's a little tight, that's a reflection on me in a, in a bad way. And I reject that completely. I mean, I think it's our clothes job to fit us. Yeah. So if there's something that doesn't fit, exchange it or replace it for something that does instead of, I'm just going to hold on to this for another couple of years until I can yeah. fit into this. Yeah. Like while we're, while we're like telling ourselves that we're trying to fit in we're spending so much energy trying to fit into our clothes. Like what yeah. aren't we doing in the meantime? Yeah. And yeah. what could we be doing that's more positive for ourselves than I have, yeah. to, I must fit into these jeans or whatever. Yeah. I love that. So you, you just set aside the extra clothes that you didn't put into your 33 items. And so let's say we get further down the road. We're really enjoying having this limited wardrobe now what do we do with the extras especially i mean maybe there are some high quality pieces that we would like to fit into again did you keep any of the extra stuff or do you just let it all go what was your approach to that so my this is where i brought back my kind of slow and steady approach and i decided at the end or beginning of each season i would go back to the stuff take out the things i wanted to rotate in take other stuff out that wasn't going to work for that season and then assess what was there. Now, after the first three months, there were some things that were so obvious I would never wear again or use again. A lot of like chunky jewelry, like I wanted a, a, a necklace to match every sweater I had. Mm -hmm. That didn't resonate with me at all anymore. So those were really easy to say, I'm just gonna donate those. And I didn't end up selling anything because it was just such a frustrating process mm -hmm. to even consider based on what I had heard from other people. And I know there are ways to do it online and in person at local consignment stores, but you have to really consider time versus money. And is this going to be worth it for me to spend time photographing it, mm -hmm. sending it out or doing all the things. Mm -hmm. And for me, it wasn't worth it to do that. And so I would just let go of some stuff. And then after every season, there would be an invitation to let go of even more. Yeah. And I think it probably took me a little over two years before it was all gone. And so now yeah. I have my 33 items and a small like Rubbermaid container where everything lives yeah. that's not in that current yeah. collection. I love that because I think there is still so much uncertainty. Am I going back to work? Am I going to be working from home forever? Will I lose the extra weight that I've gained? And so I think that's great to be able to set it aside for a little bit, detach ourselves <laughs> from it a little bit and some of the emotions that are um, associated and then just to be able to test this out. But I also love too this idea that even if we have gained some weight, I know many of us, it's like, well, I don't want to buy a whole new wardrobe at this size because that's like, I'm committing for the rest of my life. That's the size I'm going to, you know, or whatever the games we say like in our head. And so to be able to say like, okay, I don't, I just need 33 pieces still and most likely my shoes still fit and my jewelry still fit. So it's not actually that many pieces that I might need to fill in to have a wardrobe that fits right now and that I feel good in. Right. And spoiler alert, our bodies are always changing and they will be until the end. Like that is just how bodies work. So there are going to be times that you don't fit back into things or that you might fit back into things. But again, not making that a primary focus, I think is really healthy. Mm -hmm. What other, what are the other like common questions or concerns that come up when you talk about this? Yeah, so some of the common objections, yeah. uh, when people hear about project 333, sometimes as soon as I mention shoes, people get a little freaked out, but one thing to consider is that you, there might be a whole category that you decide you're just not going to count. So mm -hmm. shoe, maybe shoes are a deal breaker or jewelry is a deal breaker. That's okay. Don't throw away the whole challenge just because of that one thing. Break the rules a little bit. People get nervous about weather changes mm -hmm. and probably the biggest thing that always comes up is laundry. Like how does this affect the way you yes. do laundry? And interestingly, it doesn't, it really doesn't change that much for me, except that I, like I probably take better care. So I wash everything in cold. I line dry almost all of my clothes. Um, but I also don't have any qualms about uh, washing lights and darks and towels and everything together. 
which I know people are just not watching anymore. They're so horrified. <laughs> I just said that, but it's okay. Like I've survived it for yes. many, many years and nothing bad happened. <laughs> yep. Us too. <laughs> That's awesome. And I think, you know, I've, I've talked a little bit about, you know, even just with minimalism in general, that kind of like you mentioned, there is a little bit of risk involved, right? There is the risk involved that if you simplify your wardrobe down to this, there could be an occasion where you spill your coffee on your shirt and you don't have an extra one with you. But I think we both would agree that the benefits of this just so far outweigh the risks that at least for us, it's been so worthwhile. So what have been some of the testimonies that you've heard from other women or men, I guess, that have tried this? What, what are some of the testimonies that you hear from it? Things that you might expect, like, I've saved so much money because I'm not shopping all the time. I have so much more energy because I'm not worried about the next sale and trying to get in on this deal and this deal and, and just chasing clothes. People talk about being ready on time, which is something new for them. That was certainly the case for me. Yeah. Uh, and probably the, the ones that really are just the, the best for me are people who say, I, I used to really have a lot of anxiety and depression. And just making this one simple change yeah. changed that. Wow. So, because really, if there's there's so much that's out of our control in, in life, but if we can really think about these simple things and remove the stress from them, then we have more resilience for the tougher stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Well, Courtney, um, if anyone wants to learn more or find out more of the details about Project 333, what's the best way for them to do that? They can go to bemorewithless.com or Google Project 333. Awesome. Well, thank you so much uh, for being with us today. And I've, I'm excited. I really hope that everyone tries this out and at least does their own version of it because I think there's just so much freedom in it. Yes, I agree. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you're looking for more support, be sure to check out The Minimal Mom on YouTube, too.